Hello Hugh, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure Dan. So you were on one of the panel sessions uh, earlier in the week, which yes. was uh, on, on the, the progress of evolution in uh, clearing market structure. So um, first of all, how has it been evolving and, uh, and how close to the, the point we want to be are we? Um, I think very much that's the sort of day-to-day -day world um, that I live and breathe. Um, and it was interesting to compare notes on that and find out um, where people felt the next stage was. Uh, and really, I think people have thought primary markets are not in the near term. They seem to have taken a breather for the moment while they wait for the regulations to be clarified and become embedded. Um, and see what their competitors are also doing. So we see the next evolution of clearing and interoperability as very much the non-display MTFs and the OTC market. And uh, well, talking of the OTC market, of course, that is uh, one of the main talking points of being here, it being post-trade. Um, what is it exactly uh, that people are, are looking for in their CCP? Uh, well, I think people have found um, the benefits of interoperability so far that they can consolidate their clearing and settlement. Settlement becoming one of the major costs now um, in the whole market, often up to 50% of our client bills. Um, and we've been working to reduce those costs, uh, reducing it in seven countries so far this year. Um, and. Um, I think people have seen the benefits of that and are now increasingly seeing the cost and risk in their OTC business that they now want to put into that same model and get the benefits for that market as well. And uh, they were actually saying earlier today, uh, in, in one of the earlier panels, this idea that clearing could actually be, even for those that are theoretically exempt, uh, for mm -hmm. those derivatives that could be exempt, it could actually be beneficial to clear those regardless. I think that's certainly the experience we're predominantly an equity based CCP and the OTC that we will clear initially will be that equity um, business as well and there isn't uh, the regulatory mandate to clear that it's a commercial driver absolute commercial driver from our customers uh, and they see the, the, the risk clearing costs operational and settlement costs benefits in doing so uh, and they're keen to realise those. Saying that though, on, on, on the, sort of the converse side, is there perhaps a danger now, there's the, uh, the, a, a, what seems to be an ever-increasing list of exemptions of those OTC derivatives that will have to clear, that it'll actually push people uh, away from clearing as much as possible and push them towards these sort of deliberately exempt areas? Mm -hmm. I, I think very much, again, uh, that may be the case in the OTC derivative side in the equity space in which we operate currently, um, the regulatory drivers are not really going to come in uh, for a few years, or at least the regulatory mandate for markets to open up. So we see it as EMEA comes in and blesses the structure of interoperability, and it's left to commercial drivers to drive that forwards ahead of future regulation mandating it. So the exemptions are perhaps less relevant for us now. But saying that, it may, of course, is coming in uh, at the end of the year. Indeed. Uh, whether you like it or not, quite frankly, it would seem that um, there seems to be equal arguments on both sides that we need this deadline to be as soon as it is to push people to get it underway and get it going. However, are we going to miss out on too much detail uh, and end up with, with useless regulations? Well, I think first and foremost it's worth saying from, from our perspective we greatly welcome EMEA coming on board that for the CCP world where there are, there's no common European definition of what a CCP is uh, and therefore EMEA bringing that standard definition and common standards to it uh, puts us on a level playing field which I think we as a competitive, relatively new pan-European CCP really welcome. Um, in terms of the detail of the regulation and the timing of the impact, it was actually quite interesting hearing from some of the regulators uh, this week, um, pleading for customers almost not to demand too much detail ahead of the implementation and saying, if we give you all the detail now, we'll probably get it wrong and it will take some time to unwind. Let's bear with each other and evolve it as we go. Um, 
which is a real plea for sort of trust, I guess. Um, and if we trust each other not to be overbearing on uh, my interpretation versus your interpretation and lack of detail in the initial phases, it will be better in the longer term. Um, and if that works, I think that will be, that will be better for all. So as someone on the CCP side, mm -hmm. um, obviously with EMEA coming in, we're, see, uh, uh, we're seeing a huge creation uh, of CCPs popping up uh, uh, and it, it's expanding the market rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, is that though, because it's through demand, is it a better time for you or do you think it's going to make it, you're going to have to be more competitive? Um, I think we're very confident in our uh, competitive offering. We're the lowest cost uh, in Europe and indeed in the world uh, for clearing and we're the lowest cost in Europe for settlement. So in a competitive market that ought to put us in a very, very good stead indeed. So we welcome that opening up and greater competition there. Um, and I think what you're going to see is a kind of evolution similar to what we've seen in the MTFs from a trading perspective post MIFID. People will spot business opportunities and develop more CCPs as we're seeing and some of those will be successful, some of those weren't and there will be mergers and um, closures uh, along the way. Um, so people who think this will immediately lead to two or three pan-European multi-asset CCPs I think will have some time to wait. Fair enough and on that note thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us, it's been a real pleasure. If people do want to find out more from you where can they go? Uh, they are welcome to contact me, my details are on uh, EMCF's website and indeed that also has a wealth of information. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Dan.